Welcome to another Fast Tips video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, we're going to talk about resetting your database for the new year. Now, it always happens. Today is, what, January 5th, my first video of the new year. And this week of the year, almost every year, I see tons of people sending me emails or posting in the news groups or whatever you want to call them, forums, I don't know. Um, that I need to reset my database for the new year. How do I reset my database? If your database is properly built, there's nothing that you need to reset. There's nothing that you should have to change. If you've got orders or contacts or inventory, or whatever, that's based on dates, you should be using either a proper date field for it or a year field at least. And that there's nothing really to reset there. So let me show you the four things that people always email me that they need help with and I'll show you the four ways that I would address them. Th this list is by no means exhaustive. There's lots of, I've seen some crazy stuff over the years, but let me, let me show you the four that I always see time and time again. And if any of these match your database, uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> so number one's my favorite. I always get people that say, you know, I got my sales or whatever, and each year is in its own table. Sales 2019, sales 2020. No, no, do not do this because now your queries are based on those tables. And yeah, if you rename the table, it'll rename in the query. But if you get into more advanced stuff, especially VB programming, that doesn't happen anymore. So you shouldn't ever, 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 ever have objects in your database that are based on a date value like that. Okay. The only exception is if you're archiving data. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. So how do you fix that? Well, you store all the records in the same table. All your orders should be in an order table or a sales table or whatever you want to call it. Use proper date fields. Okay. I know people want to bring up all the sales from 2020. So they just open up that table. Here's all the sales of 2020. What you're going to do is make a query and use proper criteria to view whatever year you want. And this is how you do it. You bring your order date in, you set a value Y right? That's going to be the year of the order date. That's going to return a number like 2020 or 2021. You can either put that number here in the criteria, or you can use a parameter query for that. Then it doesn't matter. You can have all, you know, I got all 20 plus years of my sales in one table. And I, I want to see what I had. What were the sales for 2018? You pull up the query and you run it through 2018. All right. So you need to know how to do access query criteria parameter queries if you want to, or you can put in like a prompt, like enter the year, okay? And here's how to use the year function to pull the year out of a date, all right? Like I want 1994, okay? All right, moving on, problem two is very similar to problem one, but instead of having different year tab year based tables in the database, they copy the whole database. And they just, you know, set aside, okay, 2022 is done. So we'll set that one aside. Now, the whole table has all the data for that year in it. And all of the queries and reports are just based on that entire table. So now if they try to add records for 2023, the queries and reports are all wrong because it's going to show more than just that year's worth of data. Again, you solve this the same way that you solved problem one. We're going to use one table, all right? and we're gonna have criteria in our queries. And here's where you can archive data. Some people make multiple copies because the database file gets too big, I get it. Okay, my database reached the two gigabyte limit about 10 years ago. That's where you can split your database and have different tables in different files, okay? Or you can archive the data. If you've got 20 years worth of sales data in a table, for example, and you know for a fact you're never gonna need stuff from 15 years ago, you can archive that off into a, like an order archive table to, to make your database small. And then if you do, if it does turn out that you have to go back you know, and look for something that's 10 years old, you can go back in the archive table, but on a daily basis, you might not need that information. So here's a video on splitting your database. If you wanna split off the tables into their own files, if your main database is getting too big, and here's a database on archiving old records. If you got five, 10 years worth of sales data and you only need the last couple of years in your main database, you can archive them. Problem three is another big problem that I see. I've seen two people email me about this today, in fact. Um, they built their database with the previous year, this year 
design, or one person was this year, next year for budgeting, right? You got one field that is the previous year's value, and then another field that's this year's value, or this year and next year, okay? This is bad database design. Don't design your database this way, because what is previous year? If you open up this database three years from now, what is previous year, right? So to fix that, you're gonna put the year in as a field. Budget year, for example. All right, here's your budget year. Then you got your category and your value. And if you wanna compare 2022's rent to 2023's rent, for example, or do a whole chart of it, you can use a cross-tab query to compare year over year, okay? Here's a video on cross-tab queries. And here's a video for doing month over month sales, like comparing February of this year with February of last year. The technique is almost the same for doing year over year. I don't have a year over year video yet. I'm going to make one soon, but this will show you basically what you have to do. Use the year function instead of the month function. Same thing. And finally, problem four is I need to reset my auto numbers for the new year. No, you don't. You don't change auto numbers. Auto numbers are not for you. You don't touch them. They're for the computer. I got a whole video on this topic. Auto numbers are not for you. You don't, you shouldn't care what those numbers are. Those are internal numbers for access to form relationships and to make sure each record is unique. You don't touch those. It doesn't matter if Jean-Luc Picard is customer four or customer 1701, doesn't matter. What you can do, however, is use your own custom sequential counter that is based on the year. Now this is a little more tricky, it's a little more advanced, but I do have a video for it. So if you want like your, your order counter for a customer, for example, to reset. So now, you know, his last order was 2022-015. And now it's gonna reset to 2023-001. That's what this video covers. Okay, you don't, don't rely on auto numbers for anything like this. I get one more person emailing me about changing auto numbers. Ugh. I, I'm just kidding. I, I'm, I'm here to teach you. Yeah, auto numbers are not to be messed with. You don't, you don't have to worry about what their value is, okay? So that, that's pretty much it. Those are the four biggies. Those are the four big ones that people always email me. Oh, how do I prepare? How do I get my database ready for next year? How do I, how do I reset the... You shouldn't really have to if you built your database right from the ground up. And if not, if you've got a situation in your database that is year dependent, and every year around the first week of January, you've got to scramble to make some changes... Let me know what it is. I want to know. I'm going to make another video and, and add on to, you know, the list of things. I've seen a whole bunch of weird stuff. Um, oh, I do have two more links to show you real quick that are, that are helpful with year-end stuff. I've got this video on putting together year-end reporting. That's very helpful. And if you use a fiscal year, then I've got a fiscal year seminar that covers all kinds of different ways to work with fiscal year data. But that's it. That's your fast tip for today. Welcome to 2023, everyone. Hope you guys had a great New Year's Eve and safe New Year's Day and all that good stuff. And uh, looking forward to hearing your comments on what you think about uh, this video. So <laughs> post something down below. I'll see you next time. Oh, and yes, this is still my, my previous microphone that I was trying last week. And my new one arrives tomorrow. So we should, we'll see, hopefully, in tomorrow's video if I have the better mic or not. Okay, bye-bye. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the Show More link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use. 
You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full-length courses found on my website, not just for access to. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a Diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1, and it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website, and you can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.